Webflow's native interactions with GSAP are a lot more powerful than I originally thought. The main feedback I'm getting from my Pro Interactions Masterclass is people are surprised by how many of their custom code interactions can be replaced with native ones. And of course, when we build natively, it allows non-technical people to easily edit and build on top of what we create. And I believe this is only the starting point. Native interactions are only gonna get more powerful, so the best time to learn them is now when there are fewer options so we can focus on the fundamentals. And this lesson will dive into native GSAP pinning and when to use position sticky over pinning. So to get started, let's add a section and give it the class of scroll underscore section. We'll give it a height of 100 VH so it fills the screen height and we'll add some padding of 8% on all sides like so. We'll apply flexbox vertical and center to center the content inside and we'll add a heading inside with the class of scroll heading. And we'll go ahead and change out the text. And let's also add in an image element in here. And we'll go ahead and give that the class of scroll image. We'll choose an image here. We'll set the width to 40 VW, that's viewport width. So it's 40% the width of the screen. We'll set the height to 40 VW as well so that the image is a perfect square. And we'll give it position absolute and move it underneath the heading. Now for the heading, we'll give it a position of relative so it rests on top of the image. Now let's select our whole section. We'll head to interactions. At the bottom, we'll switch our version to interactions with GSAP and we'll create a scroll interaction here. We'll select a custom element animation. By default, it's gonna animate the trigger element. So it's animating the actual section that we're scrolling past. We wanna animate the image instead. So we could target by class and select the scroll image but that'll animate every image throughout the page that's a scroll image, not just the one inside our current section that we're scrolling past. So if we're gonna reuse the same section multiple times throughout the page, we wanna start with our trigger instead, and then we can use some of these scopes. Now I cover these scopes in, in depth in my Pro Interactions Masterclass, along with some very cool things you can do with them. But we'll start with this descendant scope and this allows us to select children within our current trigger. So we can add a period to target by class name and we're looking for the scroll underscore image element inside the section that we're scrolling past. Now, anytime we're animating between two different unit types, we wanna set both the from and the to state. Animating between two different units is something we couldn't do with the previous version of interactions, but this is now possible. So we'll animate the image from its original width and height of 40 VW to a width of 100 viewport width, so it covers the browser width, and to a height of 100 VH, so it covers the browser height. And we'll back out of this action, which we'll name our image action, and we'll head over to our trigger here. So we want our animation to start when the top of the section element reaches the top of the viewport, so when this section is fully in view. And we want it to end when the bottom of the section element reaches the top of the viewport as well. For now, I'll turn off the smoothing so it's perfectly in sync with my scroll bar. And we want this section to stay in place past those trigger points. So under our advanced options here, we can pin the trigger element, which will make it stay in view. Now, if we were to preview this, notice how this section isn't actually staying in place yet. And that's because whenever we're pinning this element, we need to make sure it's not a direct child of the body. So we'll need to wrap this section that we're pinning inside a parent div. And once we wrap that section like so, we'll notice now this section actually pins into place and it unpins whenever the bottom of that section reaches the top of the screen. Now, whenever we're using this pinning here, it's gonna update the height of the page once JavaScript kicks in, and that can cause elements to shift around. So as much as possible, we want to have the initial state set with CSS to avoid elements shifting around. That's why when possible, I prefer to use position sticky instead of pinning. Position sticky also allows us to disable the interaction across breakpoints or even adjust the uh, scroll distance across breakpoints. So I'm gonna uncheck that pinning. And then what we'll do is on this parent div, we'll give it the class of scroll underscore track. We'll give it a height of 200 VH. So it's two times the height of the section inside. And while we're scrolling past this track, we want the section to stay in place. So we'll give the section a position of sticky, zero pixels off the top. 
so it stays with us while we scroll past the entire track element. And if we want to adjust how long it stays with us, we just adjust the height of this track. Now, if we head back to our interactions, what we want to do is make sure that our trigger here is actually the entire track. And our interaction should start whenever the top of that track hits the top of the screen, which it is. It should end whenever the bottom of that track reaches the bottom of the screen. So right before the track starts to scroll out of view, and that way this animation ends at exactly the right point here. So now that we have that set, one other thing to keep in mind with these pinned sort of elements is we wanna make sure we're not using a lot of text because if the user has a shorter screen height or they double their font size or even on mobile where the text wraps, it can cause the text to overflow outside of this 100VH tall element. We could enable scrolling inside it, but then we have a scroll inside of a scroll and that's not really great practice. So for these pin sections specifically, um, for the best accessibility and responsiveness, we wanna limit the amount of text we use inside of these sections. Now, another thing we might wanna do is disable this interaction for users that prefer reduced motions. So if they're sensitive to motion, let's add an embed in here and we'll create some open and closing style tags. And then we can add a media at media for prefers reduced motion. So for any uh, time a user has that set, we can add some specific CSS. So the scroll track was set to a height of 200 VH, but if we just set its height to auto, that means it's gonna be as tall as the section inside. So that section will no longer really stick because it's just as tall as its parent track. And another thing we'll want to do is disable this image animation. So if we open this up, we can select that image element. And if in this case, we just want the image to cover the full screen by default. So we'll set its width to 100 viewport width, and we'll add exclamation import in here so that it overrides the Webflow interaction. We'll set the height to 100 VH, and again, exclamation import in so that we're overriding that interaction. And by default, when we run this, we'll notice that it's still pinning and animating. But if we head over to our system settings and we go to display under accessibility, and then we just toggle on this reduced motion, notice how the image automatically covers the screen whenever that switches on. And the height of the parent track is auto, so this is no longer sticking and the interaction is effectively disabled for users who prefer that reduced motion. If you wanna take your interaction skills to the next level, my Pro Interactions Masterclass will give you the confidence and systems you need. On August 13th, 2025, I'll be hosting a live event for the first 50 people that sign up for the masterclass. We'll go over the majority of the course material in real time and have an opportunity for questions and answers at the end. And again, I'm limiting it to the first 50 people so we can try to get as many questions in as possible and all learn from each other in real time. Now, even if you don't attend the live event, you'll still have access to the full course materials, which has everything you need to start learning the new native version of Webflow Interactions. So I hope to see you there.